Hello everyone, I'm Sino, and today I'm going to bring you a video about modding a mastery in Grim Dawn, which is a very talked about topic. There's a lot of modded masteries already released, but people are always asking, how? How do you go about doing this? Um, Crate supplied a modding tutorial thing um, with information about making a mastery, but it didn't really go too in-depth. It just kind of showed you the end result of what happens if you do everything correctly. Um, this video is going to take you through, essentially step by step, uh, as to how to actually make a mastery, more or less from scratch, um, and implement it into the game, and um, use its skills, etc. Uh, and this comes as at the request of Bugalug, great name, on the forums, among many other people who have requested a tutorial of sorts for making a mastery in Grim Dawn. Um, so first thing I want to get out of the way is the popular question, what sort of experience do I need for modding in Grim Dawn? Um, a lot of people think they can't get into it because they have no coding experience or they lack XYZ technical knowledge. Ultimately you don't need any of that. There's... I've made three masteries so far, and I've edited eight more, um, and I haven't coded anything for Grim Dawn yet. Um, so coding technical experience is not a requirement for making a mastery. I would say that you have to have a willingness to research and ask for help. You're not going to know everything about making a mastery when you finish watching this video. I don't know everything about making a mastery. I run into obstacles basically every time I try to do something. But most obstacles are capable of um, being overcome with help from others. So if you're unwilling to reach out, ask for help, then I wouldn't really recommend this because you're going to need to do that a lot. And another thing, kind of similar, that I would recommend having is a patience for making mistakes. Because you will make a lot of mistakes. I remember the first two masteries I made, between them having 40 or 50 skills, every single skill I added, I did something wrong. <laughs> and the skill either worked incorrectly or it didn't uh, show up in the user interface, so I had to close out of the game, restart the game after making some changes, try to see if I did it correctly that time, over and over and over. Now, working on skills after having made 60 or 70, I have kind of a good feel for it, but I still make mistakes, and I will always make mistakes, and you have to be ready for that as you're going in to make masteries for Grim Dawn, or anything for Grim Dawn. Um, and ultimately, I would say those are the only requirements. Willingness to ask for help, and patience. If you have those, if you can abide by those, you can make a mastery for Grim Dawn. Alright, so, to get started, you want to open the Asset Manager, um, provided by Crate as part of the mod tools. It's here in your installation directory. Open it up. It does this every time you open it, which is stupid. Just click Work Offline. And if this, if this is your first time using the Asset Manager, or doing anything with it, you want to go to Tools and Extract Game Files, and beforehand you probably want to go to Options and make sure these three directories are to your installation directory for Grim Dawn. Um, tools, Options, set that up, and then Tools, Extract Game Files. I'm not going to click that here because it takes five minutes, it's something you click and then make a coffee in the background while it runs. Um, when it finishes, you extract all of the database and resource information for Grim Dawn, including textures, sounds, models, that sorts of stuff. Um, when you've done that, you want to go to Mod, and New, and then create a new mod. As you can see, I have several. haven't made all of these myself. A couple of them I've made. Um, so you type in a new mod name, call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to be using an existing mod so I can select it by mod select, and then I'll go to, down to Zenith. Um, 
there's three tabs in the Asset Manager, Sources, Assets, and Database. You don't really need to worry about assets too much. You'll spend most of your time with Database and Sources, primarily Database when it comes to working with Masteries, but Sources as well. There's a lot you'll be doing here. No, doing a little bit of prep right now. Okay. Alright, so that'll set you up with a file structure for your mod. If you haven't done this before, if you have, this is all probably, you've done this a thousand times. Um, so I think the first time you make a mod, you get your database and a records folder. You might not get the records folder, I don't know. I think you do. Um, in records will probably be nothing right off the bat. There might be some folders, I'm not sure. Um, but for masteries, you really want to pay attention to the skills and UI folders. Um, also, the creatures folders with the player character subfolder to some extent, um, and the FX when you start doing more advanced stuff. Um, so, when it comes down to actually creating a mastery, there's no required organizational organizational file structure for stuff, but there is kind of an agreed upon means of doing so, um, and that's records, skills, and then your classes. Um, this is the Zenith mod, a little bit of self-promotion here. So I have all of these Zenith classes, and I'm going to be working with class 04, which isn't released yet, and I've copied a couple files from class 01. Um, so, obviously, like, none of this exists the first time you make a mastery, so, um, you kind of have to... The recommended way of doing things is to copy and paste from existing masteries, like the base ones in Grim Dawn, um, which you can get by extracting the game files. Um, copying and pasting those files and editing them yourself. Um, like, for instance, these two files here, completely copied and pasted from the Soldier Mastery of Grim Dawn. Um, so, this file... how do I want to do this? I'll do this one first. Class training... Uh, well, underscore class training underscore class xx is your mastery. It is the mastery bar of your mastery. The thing you invest in that gives you a little bit of stats um, and un unlocks higher tiers of skills the more you invest in it. This file is that entity. Um, and the key things to look for here are the header properties field. You want to set your mastery enumeration to um, something. It doesn't really matter too much. I think the only place this comes into play is the order at which... I don't even know how to describe this. Don't worry about it. Just set it. Make sure your masteries are not all the same um, enumeration, make sure they're different. Um, just set that up. The numbering doesn't matter in practice. Um, and the UI information is also something you'll want to consider. Um, this is not correct. I'm going to change this. And I'll get to what these are in a few seconds. Um, you probably you can configure how the maximum level of your masteries if you wanted to you can change them from more than 50 um, but in general if you just want to make something standard for Grim Dawn leave this as it is um, and there's a whole bunch of other things you can change a mastery bar is essentially a skill um, and it doesn't have any fancy effects to it although there's you know I'm on the skill effects tab as I'm saying this it doesn't have any, like, procs or things as a part of it, um, but you can give it other attributes. So one of the things I'm doing in Zenith is I'm giving each mastery a little bit more in terms of stats. The base stats that most vanilla Grim Dawn masteries have are here in... where am I? Character parameters, character bonus attributes, and this is your physique, cunning, spirit, health, energy. Um, you can edit these as you want. 
there's information going up all the way to 100, um, suggesting that maybe the mastery maximum skill limit will go up at some point, but for right now, you're probably only concerned with investing 50 points into a mastery. Um, so you can set those up accordingly, however you want. Again, when you're just starting out, I would just copy and paste and not worry about this. Finade all these numbers at some later date. Um, just copy and paste from one of the existing masteries and make do. Um, and yeah, so this is your mastery bar file. I don't really, there's not a whole lot to say about it, um, but I feel like I could be saying a little bit more. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll get, this is, what is this? This is the um, UI tooltip thing that pops up when you hover over the plus button for the mastery. So this is the name that pops up and this is the description it provides. Um, and these you have to make yourself and I'll go into that a little bit later on in this video. Um, but just keep that in mind. It's not difficult making these, it's just difficult linking them everywhere correctly. Um, Alright, mastery bar done, that's underscore class training underscore class. Um, where you'll be spending a lot of time is working with underscore class tree underscore class of whatever. Um, and this is your actual skill tree. And you'll notice that you have to have the mastery file, the mastery bar that we were just looking at, linked as the first skill in the skill tree. Um, and you do that by linking records, folder, folder, file name, wherever it was. Um, and again, the convention is records, skills, class name, file. Um, and then you'll link more files down here. So you'll see I have two files right here, which I'll go into a, in a sec as to what they are. But to add them to my mastery, I want to type out records, skills, zenith class 04 not 45, or 4, and charge 1.dbr, oh, copy that, copy, paste that, bam. So I've just added two skills to the mastery, which I already had existing, so I'm a little bit ahead of where you guys would be starting out, but essentially you just want to take any skill in here that, it, mm, there's more I could say but I'm not going to because it's a little bit more advanced. But take any steel from here, put it in here, make sure that um, the starting steel level thing is at zero, and make sure that it has a number. You see these don't. If I were to add skills down here, I would want to give them a number because if you don't... I forget what breaks, but something does break. Um, I think they just don't show up at all if they don't have a number. Um, so make sure they're all zero starting out. Um, and yeah, so this is the skill tree that uh, defines what shows up in a mastery itself. Um, and of course, you know, you can break convention if you wanted to. If you want to link to a skill in Zenith class 03 and have you have a skill, whatever the heck, you can do that. The um, folders and stuff don't matter functionally at all. It's just for your convenience and for the convenience of anyone uh, looking at or using your mod. Um, all right. So, do I go into skills? Sure, I'll go into skills. So, mm, not going to do it that way. So, to make a new skill, um, what I would recommend you do is look at existing ones, and copy and paste them, and tweak them until you get kind of a feel for what different kinds of skills look like in terms of file uh, identification um, and how they function as a result of their file identification. Um, so if you're comfortable with just not copying and pasting whatsoever and you just want to make something yourself right from scratch, you can right click in this big blank area, click new record, um, it'll pop up with a new record.dbr, you can rename it. Um, 
I don't know if you have to have things labeled as .dbr, but I haven't I haven't ever tried not doing so, and I don't really want to try not doing so. So I would just recommend to always have a .dbr identification for all of these things. Um, so when you open up this brand new steel, you get this dialog box thing telling you to select a template. I don't know why it tells you to use records because, or allows you to use records because if you use any of these, it breaks. Um, so always go to templates and select whichever template you want to make for this particular file. Um, most of these you don't have to concern yourself with. Really, you just want to start at the skills, anything prefixed with skill, um, and then selecting one that looks interesting. Um, let's see, I think... Is this...? No. Okay, whatever. If you select a wrong template, like I just did, you can re-change a template in a skill. Um, and backing up a bit, a template is just kind of the architecture of a skill and how it's recognized by the game engine. Um, so different templates allow skills to do different things, like I selected... What did I select? Skill, weapon attack, basic attack, and this is a weapon pool skill um, as because it has a skill chance weight so I can give it like 500% chance to activate if I wanted to um, but what I was going for was skill weapon pool default and so now you'll notice I no longer have a skill chance weight field down here um, this type of a skill is a default attack modifier like fire strike or savagery um, well, no, not savagery. That's something different, actually. But something like fire strike. Um, so you'll notice it's very similar to the mastery bar um, in terms of layout. You have offensive parameters, skill parameters. You don't have character. What is it? Character attributes, defensive parameters, or retaliation parameters. But that's only for this template. You might have those fields on a different template. Um, so for this one, you can set up a whole bunch of stuff. You can choose which weapons you need in order to be able to use this. Um, primarily what you should be interested in is the max level of the skill, such as 12, and the max ultimate level of the skill, such as 22. Conventionally, ultimate levels are 10 higher than the maximum level of the skill. Um, so you can set those. Don't use this. I'm pretty sure this is unused now. Just use this instead, which defines the tier that you unlock the skill. Zero is the mastery um, itself. Never use zero except for a mastery bar. One is one point into the mastery. Two is five points into the mastery. Three is ten points into the mastery. Nine is fifty points into the mastery, etc. So you can choose which tier the skill would appear at. Um, give it some weapon damage or something, customize all of this as you like, cooldown time, mana cost. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, a lot of them really aren't, and that's the point where you have to start asking questions. Um, skill, where was it? Skill dependency, if there was a previous um, skill in the mastery that you need in order to be able to use this skill, you can set it up here. Um, for instance, Backwards, skills, zenith, class 04, charge 1.dbr. Okay, and now it requires this charge file over here in order to be used. Um, or not in order to be used, this is in order to unlock it, rather. Um, so, a lot of the time you'll be spending that's not a good sentence um, you'll be spending a lot of your time working in skill config and UI information in my experience and here in UI information uh, I'm gonna pull this over here and open an existing file here in UI information you have lots of things to set um, for base skills you want to if they have modifiers for them, you want to set up their skill connectors, which is the line um, going across the mastery that 
can't really know how to describe it. It's just a straight line that goes across the mastery, starting at the steel. Um, it's black when you don't have the steel, and it fills in green when you do have the steel. Um, so the off version that I'm looking at now is the black version, the on version is the green version, and these, you would just copy and paste them. It One index is one tier, so if I start, if this steel exists at tier 2, um, and I give it three tiers of this, it will go to tier 5 in the mastery. Um, you can add as many of these as you want, you can add 20 of them, and it will shoot off the side of the UI, and be there really annoyingly, which happens a lot, especially when you move skills around. Um, so, this... you can do this with skill modifiers, I... W there's not ever really a reason to, unless you do something funky, which is another question, you may want to do something funky, um, but in the vanilla version of the game, this is only used by skill modifiers, uh, base skills, it's not by used by skill modifiers. Um, skill up bitmap name and skill down bitmap name are the in mastery and on the, they're the in mastery skill icon and the in um, toolbar I have no idea what to call it um, they're the skill icon for the skill uh, the graphic image <laughs> relating to the skill. Um, you can set those up. I'll go over how to set up a .tex text file um, a little bit later. And then you have skill display name and skill base description, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's the name of the skill and the description of the skill. Um, not overtly text like this, but rather something along the lines of tad lasso for skill name. O1A, something like that. And again, I'll show you how to make this. Um, and that's pretty much everything. Um, I don't really know what is pet displayable does, but is pet bonus staling determines whether or not this particular still stales with your pet bonuses or with player stats. Um, I, I don't really know why that's part of UI information, but this is where you would configure it. Um, yeah. Changes have been saved. No. Um, yes. Alright, so we've made this still that I have no intention to use. I'm going to delete it very quick. Alrighty. So, suppose you've done all of that work. Um, I'm debating the order of how I want to do things. No, you know what? Um, suppose you haven't done all that work. Suppose you want to set up this text file and this still display name. Um, this is the part where you want to look in the sources of your master, not mastery, mod. Um, in particular, you want to look in a folder called text en. I believe this folder is automatically created, although it's not automatically populated by anything when you first create your mod. Um, and you also want to look in UI, skills, icons, um, and your particular folder. Again, this, this, and this are not created by default. You would have to make these, and you can name them whatever you want. This is just kind of a familiar convention that people use. So in text en, again, you can name these files. Oh no, you can't name these files, whatever you want. Um, you want to create a tad skills txt file, um, which I happen to have here. And this will have mastery, whoop, mastery names, mastery combination names, mastery descriptions, um, and then the skill names and skill descriptions of all the skills in a particular mastery. Um, you'll notice, you know, tad skill class name, blah 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 blah, tad skill class description, blah 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 blah. You can name those whatever you want. This is just convention. Um, so as I'm working with the fourth mastery for this mod to show you guys, I'm gonna define tad skill class description. 
So four equals does stuff. Okay. Um, now I can copy and paste this into. Where can I put this? Oh, I know where. But we're not there yet, so forget that. Um, I already have a name for the mastery. We're using the champion, which is just part of my Zenith mod. You can call it whatever you want. Um, we're going to scroll all the way oop, down here to find another section. Pounds are uh, um, comments, I think, in whatever passes this file. Uh, class 04. Tag class 04 skill name A equals champion. So you can take these and put them into your mastery mastery bar file, which I think, yeah, I've already linked them here. I'll link them again for the hell of it. Um, and now the text that I just put in here will show up on in that file. Um, and you have to do this for each and every skill, which can get a little bit monotonous and it will test your creativity to come up with 20, 30 different skill names and 20, 30 different skill descriptions. But, you know, it's what you have to do. Otherwise, you wind up with tag not found errors everywhere throughout your mastery, and it looks really ugly. Uh, so, for still name of 1a equals. I have no idea what this is. Charge. So three skills, quote unquote, um, one of which is a mastery bar, but it's treated like a skill, a description for the mastery, and the mastery itself, or the mastery name itself. Um, that's all of the text, and you'll be coming up with lots and lots of text, as you can see. Um, so to make an asset out of this that the game can recognize, you want to right-click this file in sources, um, it's tag skills, auto create asset, um, and just click OK. It's going to give me an error because it already exists, but you shouldn't get this error um, when you're first making it. And that's that. Uh, from there on, in your assets, there is a. What am I doing? There is a file linking to this file such that every time you change this file, um, it is. It points to the newest version of the file. So any changes you make here are automatically rebuilt into your mod when you click build, which I'll get to later. Um, okay, so that's that. That's the text of a mastery. Now for the actual icons, things get a little more complicated. You see, I have four icons to be used for skills, and I have these already linked, but I don't have them as .tga files, I have them as .tex files. Um, so these skills here, which I have zoomed in um, by 769%, are 32 by 32 um, small images um, that I'm using as individual skill icons. Um, and obviously this looks suspiciously like Shadow Strike, and this looks suspiciously like an item in Grim Dawn. I forget where you get this, but you do get it. 
Um, ignoring that for a moment. So, in order to get these as TGAs, you you know you edit them however you want. Um, oh, sorry, not TGAs. Well, yeah. For first of all TGAs, I would recommend using um, Paint.net or GIMP. I prefer Paint.net because I have no idea how to use GIMP. Um, supposedly, both of these programs can open and save um, .tga file formats, and I find Paint.net, at least, to be very helpful for editing um, steel icons and just images in general. So I have these four icons here. This is, you know, down the down version, the down version, the up version, the up version. Um, and I'm not going to go into what down and up means, just make, in general, if you want it to look good, make the down version look a little bit darker, and the up version look a little bit brighter. It's not, it's not even remotely necessary to get your mod to work correctly, um, but it's just a nice little uh, improvement to the aesthetic of your mod that you can do. Um, so when you have that all set up, remember these are 32 by 32 files. Um, save them as .tgas, go back into the Asset Manager, and go to Auto Create Asset. Um, some people on the forums will tell you to use bitmap. Whenever I use bitmap, it screws up. So I would recommend using texture. And if your image has um, transparency, or rather if your image doesn't have transparency, for instance this one does not, just click OK. This one doesn't have transparency, so we'll just click OK. This one does, so when you um, open this, click here and use DXT3 explicit alpha, click OK. Okay, and you'll notice down here we just generated a ton of um, .tex text files that we can then link to wherever we want. Um, and we can reuse them. You can link them four times throughout your mastery or mod or what have you. Um, and you reference them by UI folder, 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 file. Um, calling these folders and having however many of them as you want. Um, and that's all there is to it. That sets up the graphical image of your mastery. Um, you can do this other images and stuff that go into a mastery, but for skills, this is it. This is all you need. So bouncing back to our database real quick, we go back in here, gonna tad class 04 skill name uh, 01A. And bam. And you can see we already had the um, .tex files linked uh, corresponding to this, I believe. Yeah. Ethereal Essence up. And you can call them whatever you want. Um, Okay, so with those set up and with them linked correctly in here, um, oh, and one thing to note, if you have a base skill that has modifiers, um, you want to put the modifiers immediately after the base skill itself in here. Don't ask me why, it's just a thing you have to do, um, which can get a little annoying if you decide you want to add a modifier or a transmuter to a skill. Um, that already exists and there's stuff after it because you have to move the other stuff down um, which can get a little tedious but always have each skill line completely with itself and uninterrupted by other files throughout um, so now that we have all of this linked this is all of our actual data now we have to get it to display in the user interface um, to do that first of all we want to have a skills master table file in our UI folder, which I think might be automatically created. Records UI, I'm not sure. Not to be confused with sources UI or just UI, but this is records UI. Um, we want a skills master table, and 
in this oops in this file you want to list um, the link to your we haven't gotten here yet but your UI class table for your mastery which I'll get to next um, this is just kind of an on the way sort of thing so I'm technically using 04 for this but if I wanted to I could define class 07 and use that um, the rest of this you don't have to worry about it the rest of this you don't have to worry about it um, and that's that so again going deeper and deeper if we um, again you don't actually even need multiple folders you can name these whatever you want um, you can have them all in the same folder but for organizational sake I would recommend splitting things out um, this is the UI folder subfolder thing um, for our mastery itself um, and the only necessary files in here are class table and class training as well as skill files um, and we just linked class table um, you'll notice it has what am I doing tab skill class name is that right No, it's not right. Oh, four. Four. Um, we'll come back to this file in a second, but this is the. If we're making correlations back to um, the records, you. Records skills files, this is the skill tree file um, rather than the mastery bar file. So this file will contain your entire skill tree um, in UI files. Whereas, where am I? This file will contain only, oops, your mastery, I'm going to reset this. Only your mastery bar. Um, so this is the mastery bar file of the UI the class training file. Class table is the full skill tree file of the UI. Um, what you want to add to class table is a bunch of skill files and you'll notice in other ones I have 24-ish um, corresponding to 24 different skills in the mastery. Here I only have two as you might imagine they are referencing the charge file from before. Um, There's a lot you can ignore in here, for instance, rollover config, don't worry about this tutorial, don't worry about this header, don't worry about this. Um, so you're only concerned with the config subfolder of this. Um, and to get these, by the way, I wouldn't even recommend creating them from scratch. I would just recommend copying and pasting them from existing masteries. Um, the only fields you're interested in for here are skill name, these three bitmap ones and is circular and the position um, x and y coordinates um, is circular is a boolean true or false and as you might imagine if you set it to true it gives you a circular um, border around your skill which is used for passives or skill modifiers that sort of thing so this one is a base skill it's um, square, so we'll leave it as false. Um, we have it correctly linked, um, and we have our coordinates for this, x and y. And these coordinates might seem like complete gibberish, but don't worry, the kind people making masteries have a graph for you. And I will have a link to this image in the description of this video. But these are the coordinates um, for where you generally want to place skills. You can put them in between these coordinates if you really want to, but it will be kind of nonsensical. Um, obviously this is you know tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, tier 8, tier 9 of skills, and then um, you have dark black lines for main skills, and then you have these grayish lines which are traditionally used for transmuters. Um, and the big dark 
lines are 70 pixels apart from one another um, in the vertical direction and 80 pixels apart from one another in the um, horizontal direction. Um, so I refer to this a lot when I'm setting up a mastery and in fact I just plot out an entire plan for a mastery on this image. Um, and I find that this method is really really helpful um, because if I design generic buff number one over here and just say oh it's at 290, 405 and I can just put those numbers bam right into the file. Um, so yeah I will have a link to this in the description of the video. Um, these are the numbers used here. Um, and that's really it. Um, the reason you want to concern yourself with these three, I'll pull up the next file. Actually, I should pull up both of these at once. Uh, if you look at these, there's a slight difference. Um, these have button border around, um, and these are just button border. Round, of course, is for if you're using a circular um, skill thing. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Again, I would recommend copying and pasting these skills and really only editing, um, not these skills, these files, and really only editing this line, uh, this line, and this line as necessary. I, I copy and paste round skills for round skills and square skills for square skills rather than making these edits myself. Um, once you've done this for however many skills you have, um, you want to link these files into the class table. And to do that, I want to open up the class table.dbr, go to config, and open up the tag, tab skill buttons thing, and ab, ab, add two buttons, I guess, um, corresponding to the new skills you've made. Having done that, you'll get those two skills to appear in the mastery. Um, most commonly, if you screw something up, it will be forgetting to add them here, or forgetting to link them in... not here here. Those are generally where most of your screw-ups will probably happen. Don't feel bad about it, it happens to everyone. Um, okay, I'm going to cross my fingers and say... I really hope I don't need to edit... I'm pretty sure you don't need to edit this. Oh, you do need to edit this. Um, you want to change these descriptions however you need. Um, I of course have a tag skill class description 04 already set up for this, um, but add to these or remove from these however you need. Um, and I think that's really all you need to change. Maybe also these files if you really get into it, which I haven't yet, um, for changing the skill, the mastery graphics. Um, this class selection table, as it sounds, is the table of all of the available masteries for a player. Um, which reminds me, I don't think I went into this, but the reason you want your PC, Vectored Creatures PC for player character um, files, is to actually get them usable by the player, because, again, this is a place you'll screw up once and then never again. Um, even after setting up th this and this, if the player character doesn't have these masteries as part of their skill tree, they won't have the option of selecting these masteries. You could edit in the mastery, I guess, with the trainer or something, without doing this, but that's more work than you need to do. Um, so, records, creatures, PC, I would just copy and paste these from the vanilla game. You need to edit both male PC01 and female PC01. 
you open them up, go to steel tree, and you add the class tree um, file into here. And again, the class tree file is this, which is your list of skills. Um, and that allows a player to actually select um, your mastery. Uh, there's other stuff down here. There's this, you can edit the devotion tree. I don't know what the quest tree is, and you can change potions and stuff. Don't worry about it. These 30, maybe more as time goes on, are the only things you're interested in for getting masteries visible to the player. And you have to edit this for both the male and female PC files um, for each mastery that you add. Um, all right. And having done all that, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna check my notes real quick. Getting rid of some extraneous files. Hold on a sec. Okay, checking my notes. Um, yeah. Okay. Having done all of that, your brand spanking new mastery should be usable um, using all of these resource files that you painstakingly made and all of these database files that you painstakingly made. Go up to build and click build, which is by default bound to F7, which I use. Um, and you'll see down here some stuff is going on. I just built it, my entire mod together. Um, if you change a whole bunch of stuff at once, this process will take a lot longer, but I didn't, so it only took a couple seconds. And now I'm going to start up Grim Dawn. And get the white screen of death. Okay, if this is your first time using mods, you want to set it to custom game. It's by default on main campaign, but set it to custom game and select whichever mod you're using. I'm using Zenith. Um, make a new character, get him to level 2 to select a mastery or something. Um, this character is at level 14 and it has an open mastery slot. So I will be able to open this. Champion does stuff. We have two skills in here, with a line. Um, ooh. Tad class 04, SIL description. Okay. Well, that's an example of something you can break. I'm glad that this happened. Um, so I'm going to fix that right now. Going down here. Uh, and opening... Why is this used? And opening this... Fixing that... Uh, when... If you're going to rebuild, which you need to do in order to apply changes to a mastery, always quit to desktop. Click... F7. Rebuild. Reload the game. Get the white screen of death again. And... Restart your mod. Champion. Champion does more stuff. Great. Alrighty, so now we can invest in here, and that was really loud for me, I don't know how loud it was for you. And charge, charges, awesome. I didn't go through setting up, you know, the 11 energy cost, 3 seconds steel recharge, I didn't go through setting up all of that, um, but that's more or less self-explanatory, we'll take a point in that. Wait. Uh... Okay, cool. 
And charge two charges twice more. Great. Awesome. Alright. So, in the span of... How long has this been going? 50 minutes? We have created a mastery. Um, I hope this was somewhat sensible. Uh, I know I just rambled on for a lot of stuff. And maybe not everything I said was coherent. But in the end, we at least have video footage of correctly creating a mastery. With only one mistake. Be prepared to make mistakes. Um, Alright, so I hope this was helpful. I might go into... I might make another video going into some of the more advanced stuff, such as... What in the world do all these stupid things mean? Um, and how do I use them? I might go into that. I might go into pets, which is a very complicated subject. Um, uh, it's not too complicated once you get the hang of it, but again, getting the hang of it, kind of a complicated subject. Um, I might do that, I'm not sure. Um, most of it, you pro like with this as a basis, you should be able to figure out the rest of things by taking a look at existing masteries, which I would very, very, very heavily recommend doing if you're interested in modding Grim Dawn. Um, look at what has already been done. It, turn it turns out Crate is pretty good at what they do. Um, you can do a little bit more than they can uh, by abusing certain things in hacky ways, sure. Um, but the production value that Crate makes in their masteries is worth learning from. Um, and they do things right. So, look at existing masteries, look at how skills are set up, um, copy those skills if you really want to, no one's prohibiting you from doing so. Copy them, use them, um, incorporate them however you want, and eventually, with enough dedication, you will have a fully fledged mastery that you can call your own. Alright. Doesn't that sound fun? Um, alrighty. I'm Sino, I hope you found this video either enjoyable, watching me blunder about, or informational, hopefully both. Um, if you have any questions, please, please ask me um, in the description, or not in the description, in the comments for this video. I honestly may not be able to answer everything, but I will try to answer as much as I can when it comes to modding masteries. Um, if I can't answer anything, ask on the forums, ask on Reddit, ask your friends on Steam that maybe might be modding stuff, ask people. Uh, someone somewhere knows the answer. Um, alrighty. Take care, guys.